automobile that's on the market today, and it was introduced in, in the early 1970s, and yet today it is still the, the number one attention getter on the street. Well, when you say outrageous, you mean in design? Yeah, and, well, in, in every respect. It's got a, a V12 engine and, uh, and uh, the incredible size of the car. It's got room for two people and no luggage. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the car is just astonishing. It's 455 horsepower or something like that. Okay, and, uh, we're talking figures. I, well, I'm looking for a car, you know, and, and I kind of like attention. Red is my color. Tell me, how much do I have to pay for this car? Well, well it's sort of like the income tax form, the new short-form income tax form. The government says, how much money do you make? You fill in the blank, yeah. and then the next instruction is, send it to us. <laughs> uh, they don't even quote a price on this car. The dealers ask you how much... Soon to be friends, I think. Just tell me about these cars. Well, these are TVR automobiles, and TVR are the consonants and the first name of the man that started the company, a man named Trevor Wilkinson. And uh, a lot of the cars we're seeing today, the two-seat roadsters, the, the old uh, type British sports cars, which are now being executed by the Japanese and so forth, the TVR is like the original thing. These cars have been built uh, in not two different forms since 1949. Uh, the red one behind us is actually a 1979 model, and you can see that there are still uh, a lot of similarities between, uh, between the cars. And the company takes uh, production parts from various British cars, Ford engines and gearboxes and so forth, and designs and builds their own bodies, and comes up with a relatively affordable uh, two-seat roadster with a lot of spirit and a lot of genuine British tradition to it. Okay, what, is, what does that mean, actually? Let's take a look into this one. What does British tradition mean? Well, s most of the British tradition, some of the British traditions weren't all positive. In some cases, they were engines that blew up in electrical systems that didn't work, but because they're now using more modern uh, engineering, you, s you get much better reliability than you got before, but the top comes off, and the windows roll down, and you have the fun of that little gearbox snick-snicking in, into gears and heel and toe downshifting and all those other wonderful I, things. I think I better sit in it just to, just to check. Hold on one sec. Just excuse me for a second as I get into my beautiful new car. Ooh. Oh, oh, it smells good in here. Wait, it smells like... Come here, Jim, for a sec. Now tell me, the dealer's not listening. Okay. Between you and I, would this be a good car for me to personally consider? The biggest problem you'd have with this, again, it doesn't have a back seat. It's not very practical. Right. And um, you're going to spend still twice as much as you would for your Mazda Miata. So and we're talking about forty thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, forty or so? to fifty thousand, depending. You can get also get this car with a V8 engine if you want to go out and troll for Camaros on a Friday afternoon in Scarborough. And by Lotus, which to me would actually make it kind of a cool car. What does this mean? An impulse handled by Lotus. Well, the first of all, you probably have never heard of a Suzu. No. And you've probably never heard of Passport. No. Well, Passport is the division of General Motors of Canada that is importing cars from various General Motors affiliates around the world, of which Isuzu is one of them. It's a Japanese company, and they build this car in, in Japan. Now, the Japanese are, are famous for good engines and good finish and good surface quality, but they're not so hot with suspensions. Lotus, which is also a division of General Motors now, is the world leader in suspension technology. So what they do is they take the basic design that the Japanese lay out, send it over to England, the Lotus engineers figure out how to make it handle, and then they stick the little badge on the side. So what we've got here, the Impulse, is basically a sort of a 2 plus 2 coupe. It's the sort of car for someone who wants kind of a sportier-looking car than a, a sedan, but someone who, who can't uh, get away with just a two-seat sports car like the you may out of the chair. Wait for me. Hold on. Mmm, the smell of leather. So what kind of car is this? Well, this is a what they call a California concept Camaro. This is a car that's been designed by General Motors advanced styling people, and it's their impression of what they think sort of the next generation Camaro should be. And we're looking 1993, 1994 kind of time frame. Is there an engine in this? There is an engine in this. I don't know what's in it, but uh, th this particular car is what they call a styling concept vehicle. It is not an actual running automobile, but it could be made a running car without too much effort. And as you can see, this is uh, a fairly dramatic, fairly bizarre car. If, if this car isn't much music, I don't know what car is. Take a look at this, you guys. Look, see this? Explain to me what that is. Barely. Just lean back a bit. I can't. Uh, this is a Nakamichi sound system, and these are all the uh, controls for it, the uh, volume switches and tuning and so forth, all very close at hand. Is this what's supposed to be the gear shift? That's the gear shift lever right there, and these are all the minor controls of temperature and so forth. Again, so when your hand is shifting gears, you're very close to all the uh, the operation of the car. And that uh, cockpit looks something like you'd see in an F-18 jet fighter, <laughs> and that's sort of the inspiration for this car. And frankly, I think it looks spectacular, and I think uh, our roads need cars that look like this. And are they going to have this weird doing up business here? 
I would be surprised. That probably won't make production. This is a very difficult sort of a thing to do. These doors that cut into the roof, it's hard to get a proper seal. Uh, but they could easily just do this a regular T-bar hatch roof like the Camaro currently has and have a conventional door, which would be a lot cheaper to manufacture, which would bring the car. He actually is a driver, and here he is playing <laughs> in his, look at his new toy. Jim, what are you doing? <laughs> well, this is the car that uh, my partner and I are racing in the Firehawk Endurance Series this uh, year. It's a seven race series and uh, Suzuki Dealers Association of Ontario and Quebec are supplying us with the automobile and uh, the program basically is we race the car with the Drive Against Drugs logo on the front of the car and the, the point of the operation is to attract young people's attention because race cars are the sorts of things that young people are interested in and we take the car to high schools across Ontario and deliver the message that if you're going to play around with drugs don't get behind the, the wheel of a car. Now, I think that's very smart marketing as well because this car is pretty fast but really inexpensive. That's right. This car as it sits, uh, well not in race trim, but the, the production car uh, is around $13,000 and it has a very fast engine and very excellent suspension and we hope it's reliable because we've got to go 24 hours in this thing and uh, we have every every expectation that it'll, it'll do very well in the racing series. Now, you're also going to be lecturing about drinking and driving? Yeah, it's been a long-standing uh, thing for me personally and for my partner David White who is with the Young Drivers of Canada organization. He also has been running against in that uh, program for a number of years. So the two of us are teaming up with Suzuki to put this car on the on the track and uh, A, have some fun and B, deliver what we think is a pretty important message. I didn't know that Suzuki actually made cars. I thought they just dealt with motorcycles. Yes, they're better known as a motorcycle manufacturer, but uh, they've been building the little Samurai, the little four-wheel drive uh, mud plugger uh, in Canada now for almost 10 years. And a few years ago, they brought out uh, a line of sedans and, and hatchbacks. And uh, this particular car is called the Swift GT, which is the hottest of the Basilica. Okay. And and uh, that got my uh, picture pasted on, on every bulletin board, dart board in the Toyota Canada head <laughs> office. But uh, it's interesting. This car, men tend to hate the way this car looks. Women tend to love the way this car looks. And uh, I don't really understand. I've never seen a car that has that kind of gender-specific uh, uh, preference for it. The designer of the car, one of Jeep, uh, Toyota's best designers, admits that he was influenced strongly by his wife when he was designing the car. So maybe there is, in fact, some feminine input to this car that it appeals to a woman's uh, sense of taste, but it doesn't appeal to a man. I don't know. I don't. Ha I hate to be that kind of uh, sexist kind of comment, but <laughs> that just seems to be the way this yeah, thing comes Yeah, being a sexist out. pig is not flattering. Let's 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 uh, let's that's, go in. Let's just, just check. That's not uh, political <laughs> no, statement. That's simply ahead. research. <laughs> Inside the car is beautiful. Okay. Tell me about it. Well, you can see that it's a, it's a, I think it's a beautifully designed dashboard. It's uh, The instruments are all clear and, and nicely laid out. The, the seats are comfortable. Um, I have a lot they of problem. Yeah, I have a lot of problem with the exterior styling, but that's, again, a personal taste. Uh, the engine is still pretty noisy for my taste, and the ride isn't as smooth as I think it should be uh, in a car that costs this kind of money. But um, maybe I'm being more overly influenced by my opinion of the styling. Okay, so we've looked at a fair amount of cars here. I mean, there's the beautiful Mazdas, which I want and I can't have. So, so of all the cars we've seen, and even the ones that we haven't actually had a chance to look at today, for me, Eric M., much music VJ, with very little money and, and desire for grooviness, what car would you, or the cars, would you suggest within my price range? Well, of the cars we've looked at, I think the Suzuki Swift is the one that sort of caught your attention a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, the car has a good reputation. It's uh, the price is right. You mentioned that when you slam the door, it sounds a little bit tinny, but for twelve grand, you get tinny doors. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. uh, Another car that we noticed just in passing, we didn't get a chance to get a shot of it, was the new Hyundai XL, the South Korean car. But again, you seem to be uh, preferring the sedans uh, with the rear seats and stuff. I don't know whether this this means anything. Uh, not, but, um, Absolutely nothing. Okay. I have a lot of luggage. <laughs> okay, that's that's <laughs> lots of hats. Literally, lots of hats. That that would I go door to too. door, Jim. It's door. a hard business. Okay, that's tough. That's so. Tough. Listen, I would like to take a look at the car that you chose as the car of the year for those people who have a little bit of cheese. To spend. So let's take a look at that. Let's get some music happening here. And we're going to walk back over to this car, which for those of you who are looking for the perfect luxury car that doesn't cost too much money? Well, compared to a Ferrari, no, but uh, I, I, I don't know whether. Don't give it away. Okay. They I have to stay tuned. Okay, we'll just sell them. I don't think much music plays a lot of Mahler symphonies, do they? <laughs> no, no, not too many. That'll By the way, show me the book that oh, yeah. we're holding here. 
This is the Auto Show program, and the guts of the Auto Show program is a magazine called Car Guide. And uh, can you see that? Okay. Car Guide magazine has been published now for this is the 19th year. I haven't been working on it quite that long. My grandfather started. No. Uh, <laughs> and in Car Guide, we have. Uh, editorial describing all the hot new cars for 1990 and various editorial pieces of variety of things and the most important thing is photos specifications and price actually very odd looking Jim what is it you're, you're being too kind I think even you and I both agree on this one this thing is just flat ugly uh, <laughs> this is the Toyota 4500 GT and this again is a concept car which some diseased mind at Toyota thinks is what the grand touring automobile of the 1990s is going to look like uh, I hope he's dead wrong because this thing is just plain brutal it looks very heavy yeah heavy the lines don't go anywhere nothing seems to fit with anything the, the back end looks like it was designed by somebody who never met the guy that designed the front end and they just kind of bolted them together when when they met on the production line it's uh, the car has been shown at the Frankfurt Auto Show it was shown at am all over it well this is sort of the Russian equivalent to of a, of a Mary Kay car it's uh, it really is a Russian car it's a Russian car it's uh, again a concept car developed by uh, the people that make the Lada automobile in Russia it's obviously, as you can see, a teeny weeny little car with a phenomenal paint job, <laughs> and uh, the I don't know whether that's pink or purple or mauve or what you'd call that. Uh, the people here in Canada put the little gray uh, tint stripe with the uh, turquoise uh, strip along the side of it to try and make it stand out a little bit. It's got a turbocharged engine, so it would go pretty quickly, c given that it's a teeny weeny little car. And uh, maybe if they build one, that's uh, that's your machine. That's kind of neat. I don't I don't like the shape of it too much. It sort of reminds me a bit too much of the Jetsons. That's not bad. That's, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember the Jetsons, but I remember people who do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now listen, I think it's time now. I think it's time now to announce the question in order for you guys to win one of these, which is the. Oh my! Someone's doing a little bit of crazy driving. Right here. Someone to win one that, of these car that guides. Was, that was me racing last year. Yeah. <laughs> so in order to win one of these, which gives you all the specifics about every car available in Canada this year, Mr. Kenzie is very involved in this particular project himself. He would like to ask you a question, and that is, take it away. Two-part question: In the Beach Boys' Little Deuce Coupe one more thing what is the one more thing that his car has and what is he talking about no, but I think you should sing the line the one more thing it's got you tell me what the one more thing is that it's got and what is he talking about what is he referring to? Do, do you get it? I hope you do. Anyway, um, if you if you have that answer, <laughs> right to Jim Kenzie's Car Guide, Care of Much Music, 299 Queen Street West, Toronto, Ontario. Oh, yeah, the pink gives it away. Uh, 299 Queen Street West. Well, this is my choice. If I had to have just one car and price was no object, this would be it. This is the BMW M5. It's got about 311 horsepower. It's a front-engine, rear-drive car, phenomenal suspension. With this big, roomy, comfortable sedan, you could go out and chase Ferraris all day long and all night long and beat them half of the time. And then you could put your mother-in-law in a car and take it to the opera and be equally at home. Well, the car is a phenomenal piece of work. How much are we talking here? I thought you'd get around to that. <laughs> it's hard to believe that an $80,000 car could be considered a bargain. But to me, there's a lot of cars that's cost more than this. I've never driven a car that has more performance for that kind of dog. No kidding. So, ladies and gentlemen, wrapping up the show, here it is, Jim Kenzie's Choice of Car. Fanfare, please, and more music. <laughs> Wait, do that again? Problems.